Hi everyone, this is Jagmeet here and in this video we will talk about the concept value at risk or VAR and like all my videos we will start with an example and then build on this concept. So let's get started. One of my friends asked me a question, what's the maximum amount of money I can lose in Indian stock market in one day? It was a weird question because most of the people ask you, what's the maximum amount of money I can make in Indian stock market in one day? Why is he asking about the maximum amount of money he can lose? To which he said that he is risk averse and he wanted to know what's the maximum amount of money he can lose in Indian stock market. And it was a really confusing question because I never knew whether he is investing in a particular stock or he is investing in a portfolio which is indexed based. What if he is he invested on a day uh, on which market fell? and he lost all the money or he invested on a day uh, which was quite unlucky and uh, he was not able to get the returns and he particularly lost a lot of money. I know that there will be a circuit that will come into picture if the market falls below 10% but obviously 10% is also a lot of money. I don't want him to lose that much amount of money. So is there something that can be done uh, so that we can come to know about his losses in a statistical way? So in order to solve the problem, the assumptions I took was that uh, he is investing in an index based portfolio and let's say the index is Sensex or BSC 30. I also assume that history is the best indicator of future. So if we have historical data for past one year and we figured out what was a maximum loss or maximum gain in one year on a particular day, then we will be able to safely predict uh, what, what we are talking about or for the future as well. And we also assume that Indian markets are fairly liquid and my friend can exit the market on any particular day. So now let's move to the method. Uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to collect the data for, uh, BS, for BSE 30 or Sensex for past one year. And we figured out that there were 249 working days in past one year. Uh, we will figure out the maximum gain or loss percentage in a day. So it is uh, X day. If you have invested in X day, uh, then what was the price on X minus one day? The difference between that divided by the price on X minus one day would be the maximum gain or loss uh, incurred in a day. Uh, and uh, so we went to the site for bscindia.com to get the data. So it's all real data. We have taken it from the market data available on internet. So you can also go ahead and do the experiment along with me. Let's uh, see what was there on my Excel. So on my Excel, I got uh, that on 1st October, the, uh, the closing value of Sensex was 18823.91 on 3rd of October it's 18869.69 uh, a second of October is a holiday in India so that's why it's not listed there and we collected the data all the way till uh, 30th September 2013 the maximum loss or gain in a day for simplicity we are taking it today's date x date minus x minus one date into 100 for percentage divided by the x minus one date so it's again b2 
and that's our result uh, that's the result for everything so let's write gain slash loss negative numbers signify loss and let's round it off to two decimal places format cell number to two decimal places okay so this is a maximum gain or maximum loss that the person can incur in a particular day so based on that let's go ahead and put an auto filter data filter auto filter data filter auto filter so we figured out that the maximum loss can be 3.97 percent and the maximum gain can be 3.77 percent going back to a powerpoint slide uh, we collected the data for past one year closing price of sensex the maximum loss is minus 3.97 percent and maximum gain is 3.77 percent so if he invested 100 rupees at the end of the day uh, the maximum loss he could incur is 3.97 percent so the money left would, would with him would be 96.03 and the maximum gain he could have is 3.77 percent so money he would have at the end of the day on a particularly good day is 103.77 percent but what's the probability that he will invest on a day on which the loss is minus 3.97 percent it's one out of the 248 sample size that we took and the probability is really really low it's 0.4 percent to which my friend had a second question that he doesn't have such a poor luck he is 95 percent confident that he will not choose the five percent of the worst days so what he's trying to say is let's go back to our excel sheet uh, that if we took this copy pasted it here as uh, space special values only and then I said for this entire data data sort and we want to sort it on gain or loss then by date and then by close and gain or loss in uh, descending order let's say so i'm saying that let's go to the last part so my friend is saying that he is confident that he would not pick up any of these days so let, let's see what that day is so format cell this is a date and let's represent it in this format so he will not choose 16th of august 2013 or 3rd of september 2013 or 27th of august 2013 or 20th of june 2013 so he is confident that he will choose somewhere in this range of values rather than the worst case five percent values so what's the worst case five percent values so it is uh, five percent of 248 so that's 12.4 so uh, worst 12.5 uh, value so 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 for simplicity let's say 12 so he will not choose these values and he will choose one of the values that are uh, that are above this so if i have to put it on uh, uh let's say i have to put it on a frequency diagram and i created a frequency diagram and it came like this what my friend is saying is these are the worst 5% worst 
values. So he's saying that he will not choose the data here. Uh, this he's confident. He's ninety-five percent confident that he will not choose uh, one of the days here, and he will choose the days here. So this separating line. If we consider this very carefully, what he's saying is that the separating line uh, at 95% confidence interval, this is the worst case scenario of the loss that he can incur. Or uh, this is what he thinks because he's choosing any of the data over here and he can particularly choose it right at this point also. So this is the a loss that he can incur considering that he doesn't chooses the worst five percent let's go back to our presentation escape this let's go back to our presentation so uh, what we are going to do is that we'll create a frequency histogram see what those 5% worst cases are or the scenarios are find out the border condition uh, for the maximum loss so this is a histogram that gets constructed from that data i'll show you in a moment but let's first concentrate on the value that we are trying to talk so let's go back here so these red ones are the worst 5% scenarios this is the borderline case that I was talking about let's let me put it in green color so this is the borderline case I'm talking about so since my friend says that he would choose values in here or his sample would be somewhere here he will invest in one of these days so practically he's saying that he believes that this is the loss or this is a maximum loss that he'll incur because he believes that he will be choosing one of the values in this range so this is the maximum loss or if i just put make it blue this is the worst loss he'll incur uh, let's see how this histogram is getting constructed so let's go back to our excel so this is the sheet this is again and the long loss percent so we create the range so we create the range from minus four percent all the way to the plus four percent it's a 0.25 step now I'll go to data I'll go to tools data analysis histogram okay the input range is this on which we want to create histogram and the bin range and that's the intervals are these okay so put it on new worksheet I say okay this is uh, the frequency diagram that gets constructed chart wizard next finish this is the <coughs> frequency histogram which particularly is shown on the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So we figured out that uh, the worst are uh, 12 values. So let's go back and tick mark the worst 12 values that are there. So 1. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So here. So these are the worst twelve values. Uh, my friend will not choose uh, the value that's there. Uh, he would be always on the higher side of this. Uh, but for convenience sake we are saying that he believes that 1.75% is the maximum loss 
at this border condition and this is what is called value at risk at his confidence interval so what becomes important is the confidence interval he is 95 percent confident that he will be on the right hand side when choosing one of the days to invest and based on that uh, confidence interval he believes that the maximum loss that can that can be incurred is 1.75 percent so if he invested 100 rupees uh, he would lose uh, 1.75 rupees and he would be left with 98.25 uh, for his confidence interval needless to say if the confidence interval increased and it was 99 percent and 99 percent is let's say how much of 248 so the one percent was the worst case scenarios into uh, 248 1% so it's 2.48 let's go back to the PowerPoint slide once again so uh, 2.48 is approximately somewhere so this is 1 this is two somewhere in between so let's say approximately three point somewhere here would be 2.5 so just uh, to prorate we can say 3.125 so for a 99 percent confidence interval for the data that we measured the maximum loss at the border condition would be 3.125 ie he believes that at 99 percent confidence interval if he has invested rupees 100 he will lose 3.125 rupees uh, this value is called the var value and for this value couple of things are important uh, it's your confidence interval that's very important and uh, it's the total range of values that are there so what is the borderline condition what's the maximum loss that you are considering that's it from my side uh, that brings us to the end i'll just exit this it brings us to the end of my presentation thank you and uh, in some of the next sessions we'll also talk about uh, over here we were not sure what the graph shape would be what happens if we believe that uh, uh, sensex follows a normalized curve or what happens when we say that uh, there are a lot of permutations and combinations so there is a, a var that can be calculated for a normalized curve we will also talk about that and we'll also talk about uh, different scenarios that's monte carlo simulation thank you for now thanks a lot